Today we are going through task number 11, Insecure Design, which is part of the OWASP Top 10 from 2021 module, which is part of the Complete Beginner Path on TriHackMe. Insecure Design. Insecure Design refers to vulnerabilities which are inherent to the application's architecture. They are not vulnerabilities regarding bad implementation or configurations, but the idea behind the whole application or a part of it is flawed from the start. Most of the time, these vulnerabilities occur when an improper threat modeling is made during the planning phases of the application and propagate all the way up to the to your final app. So in other words, basically, this is this is like arguing about any kind of subject. They have uh, strengths and weaknesses. Some other times, insecure design vulnerabilities may also be introduced by developers while adding some shortcuts around the code to make their testing easier. A developer could, for example, disable the OTP validation in the development phases to quickly test the rest of the app without manually inputting a code at each login, but forget to re-enable it when sending the application to production. I think one time passcode validation is this one, as we can see in this uh, picture, OTP, right? One time passcode, one time password. Insecure password resets. A good example of such vulnerabilities occur on Instagram a while ago. Instagram allowed users to reset their forgotten password by sending them a six digit code to their mobile number via an SMS for validation. If an attacker wanted to access a victim's account, he could try to brute force the six digit code. As expected, this was not directly possible as Instagram had rate limiting implementation. So that after 250 attempts, the user would be blocked from trying further. 250! Oh my God, that's a lot of tries. Yeah, here we can see all the tries. 250 is still viable, but uh, at the next one, 251, the passcode is blocked if it's incorrect. However, if, however, it was found that the rate limiting only applied to code attempts made from the same IP. Ooh, let's go. Extra 250 from another one. If an attacker had several different IP addresses from where to, uh, from where to send requests, he could now try 250 again. For a six code digit code, you have a million possible codes. So an answer would need 1 million divided by 250, 4,000 IPs in order to cover all possible codes. This may sound like an insane amount of IPs to have, but cloud services may it make it easy to get them uh, at relative small cost, making this attack feasible. As you can see here, we have N computers basically, and we keep pumping uh, the code. Notice how the vulnerability is is related to the idea that no user would be capable of using thousands of IP addresses to make concurrent requests to try and brute force a numeric code. The problem is in the design rather than in the implementation of the application in itself. Since insecure design vulnerabilities are introduced at such an early stage in the development process, resolving them often requires rebuilding the vulnerable part of the application from the ground up and is usually harder to do than any other simple code related vulnerability. The best approach to avoid such vulnerabilities is to perform threat modeling at the early stages of the development lifecycle. To get more information on how to implement secure development lifecycles, be sure to check out SSDL room. This is a room that we will go through. Secure software development lifecycle. And we have the practical part of this, of this uh, room. Let's kick start Firefox. Practical example, navigate to our vulnerable IP at port 85 and get into Joseph account. All right, let's go there. We go 10, 10, 66, 285. This application also has a design flaw in its password reset mechanism. Can you figure out the weakness in the proposed design and how to abuse it? All right, let's see, forgot my password. Uh, please enter your username. Okay, let's do the, the usual process. Joseph, go continue. 
we don't save this please the security question core for your identity favorite color uh favorite color red incorrect answer try again okay uh, blue pink purple so i know what we can do we can we can kickstart burp okay proxies on okay we send this request to repeater and here we send the request to c302 not found here we can do uh, we can send this to intruder we sniper the green position with payloads payload set is one simple list let's see we go for a simple list black white blue red purple brown what else what else is there that we didn't try red pink we tried blue we tried um green we tried let's just do it like this start the attack let's see what will happen we see three or twos Okay, so as you can see, it's just trial and error. Exactly what we saw with uh, the passcode. But it made it simple for colors, obviously. All right, so try to reset. Yeah, we've done that. And what is the value of the flag from Joseph account? Well, we copy this. We go back to the login. We say here, Joseph. Enter the password and here we should be prompted with remember to move private files out of the server. We see here not even cats could save you. <laughs> okay, this was fun. This was fun. Let's see. Cat images. We have also two images. Mono rail cat. And they told me I could be anything, so I became a cannonball. All right. All right. So we saw the flag and the docs nodes. Remember to move private files from the server. Okay. Just a hint to check the private. So this was it, right? So in the thing is that in insecure design, uh, you don't always introduce vulnerabilities. There are sometimes just inherited. That's the idea. Obviously, you can also introduce it, but the idea is that we also had a, this cute, um, let's say, practical part. And I guess we'll see each other in the actual security. And we'll, we'll see each other in task number 12, security misconfigurations. So see you then.